Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, my name is Ken Lindhardt, I work in a company called Ramble. We are an architectural and engineering company. I've been working with CD Engine since the version 2012 and I almost love every day of doing so. Um, yeah, sometimes it gets a bit messy with CD Engine, but, but you know how it is. Um, unfortunately, I'm not in, uh, in Zurich, I sit here in my, in my living room. Uh, hopefully next year I will be able to join you and um, yeah, I miss talking with you all. So I'm going to talk about 3D CAD uh, to CD Engine smart models. Uh, it sounds a bit boring, but um, maybe there's a bit of a twist to it. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, say that I'm going to do this presentation a bit casual. Um, and I will just show some slides and then I will try to jump into to CD Engine and hopefully everything will not explode. Um, but let's see. Uh, we have um, Ramble is an international company in, um, yeah, based all over the world and we have around 300 offices. And the head office is in uh, Copenhagen, so that's where I'm placed. So one of the things that I'm using CD Engine a lot to is to basically go from one 3D software thing and into CD Engine and then export it out to maybe visualizations or reporting. So my big idea with using CD Engine, CD Engine is to automate any 3D data to any output. Um, I don't think that would ever <laughs> be 100% but we are, we are getting there. Um, so what we have done so far is basically that we have been using uh, public GIS data, maybe some CAD data, 2D data, and then uh, stuffed it inside of CD Engine, assigned CGA rule files, and then exported it into different um, um, uh, other engineering tools. Um, and when we started uh, with the largest project so far, uh, the Danish Technical University, um, we were had, had a lot of focus on the DGNB reporting and that's a sustainability reporting method um, from Germany that uh, basically needs a lot of information about the built environment or the urban area. So we needed to report on everything that we created, how many trees, how tall are they, uh, how much grass, asphalt and, and stuff like that. Um, so that was uh, that was the first part of, of what we did, and when we are creating these kind of models, then why not just add um, some nice looking materials to it? Because then it's just basically a one click export import. Maybe add some grass to the roof and then change the trees to to unreal trees, and then you have some kind of a, a nice visualization. And I thought it was uh, very important to, to kind of like get the understanding that if you are creating, if you are assigning a material uh, that you think are pretty um, to, to an object in the scene, then it has some consequences for the sustainability uh, reporting. Um, so I started uh, just creating a big library of PBR materials so it would be easy just basically to inside of CD Engine know, okay, if I'm using this kind of grass type, it will look like this, and I will get this re result in the sustainability uh, report at the end. But also, of course, to make it very easy to go and create visualizations at the end. All right, so basically, when we worked on the Danish Technical University, we did use uh, urban dynamic uh, rule as a start rule because that was just creating, as you all know, um, extruded buildings, windows and stuff like that. But when we wanted to create it as a, a 3D container, then we really needed to create different kind of uh, translators, CGA code, to get all of these formats connected into urban dynamics. So we didn't need it to, to create new rules for every time. But as soon as we knew what, how Ramble were, were thinking when they created the models, which kind of um, parameters but were they using, then we could just use those parameters and then translate it into urban dynamics. 
So I believe that it's much better to to have all of this done automatically from my side than asking people doing work that they're not used to do or create things uh, differently. And as soon as, as long as we can do this uh, more or less automatically, then it's just a win-win situation. So this is my current rule setup. Urban Dynamics is the master of everything, and then it push all of the um, the yeah the different. Uh, component splits into facades, gardens, openings and roofs and then everything get connected again into the materials and the materials defines how the reports will look at the end. Okay, so back to uh, how those streets were, were generated. We had this uh, this project in, in Aarhus in Hyland, um, and what I received was MicroStation 3D DGN files, um, so I needed to get those guys into to GS, and then I needed to clean up uh, the models because it just had a lot of vertices that that wasn't very necessary for me. And then add materials, um, and then they came in with something funny. They wanted me to split up the models according to the. Uh, to a time schedule, so basically they wanted to create some kind of um, semi-4D simulation of, of the street. Um, and then they also have some 3D buildings. So what we needed to add with CD Engine um, was yeah, basically clean up and add materials, but also we needed to add a lot of assets like traffic lights and street signs, um, light poles and stuff like that. And then everything just needed to be wrapped up in a nice looking JavaScript application and pushed to the portal so we could um, share it with the public. The idea was that they could go out in the field, talk to a, a person living next to this new street, show the model on, a, on an iPad and tell them that this is maybe not so bad as it seems or, or how can we resolve your, your issues. So I wanted to talk about something that I really think is fun. Um, how did we create the street signs in uh, 3D? Because that's not something that CAD people are doing. They're creating this in uh, 2D uh, and they're creating, creating it so you can see it with the eye. You can see that this, this guy up here, that's a lot bigger than it actually should, should be. And then it's just pushed out so you can and like see it on a drawing. Um, so it's not in the accurate size, it's not placed correctly. They do have a, a something uh, so you can you know where it's placed. And you can only have one information per object. So um, but but a, but a street sign like this has like uh, one, two, three, four uh, different signs with different um, naming on it. And we needed to get all of these information down to, um, yeah, to the placement. So in IGS we created, a, a, yeah, it was a Python script who um, uh, did some analysis on where are things located to each other and then added everything down to the, the final SM part down here. So we had a, a long list that we could, um, and now you can maybe see that this is something that we could use inside of uh, CD Engine. So we get, now we have all the, uh, all of the attributes down in, um, in, the, in, in the point where the, the sign is placed. And then we also have all of the, the pictures of the different signs. Um, so now the, the the funny part was to create um, a link, a, a rule that basically created the signs from the new information that we got and then just plastered all the different um, uh, signs to, to the 3D model. All right, so let's try to bring up CD Engine. Got it right there. So this is basically, uh, this, is, uh, this is how it it looked when I received it almost um, and if you see right here we got the, the different uh, let me try to see if I can frame it. we got the 3d3 signs um, 
They actually look pretty good, I think, also in, in the visualization, they, they, they look quite nice. Um, so you have, uh, you have the data on it, let me just get this guy, and then maybe just... So this one is basically giving us the data that is this street sign that we're using. But if we said that we are going to have another line of objects, then you can see then it will just change to the data that we are receiving. Uh, and I don't think that this is like a normal place to be where you can run into plane kits and a uh, highway. Uh, so it's pretty fun to work with and you also have um, the ability to Yeah, so as, as you can see, it will be you will be able to to create some odd uh, things. But if you have the data, um, then then you could basically just assign the data on on which numbers that you're going to to show here. All right, so that was the street signs, um, and then I also wanted to show you how the material rule works. If I'm able to do so, so this is basically just taking things from my material catalog and it's creating a number. And um, so if we wanted to say, now we want to see, show me all the bricks you got inside of, um, of your rules. And there you go, now you can see uh, all of the bricks materials. It's not that many, but anyway, uh, and those are PBR materials. Everything is just merged together inside of, uh, of CD Engine. Um, it can take some time to, um, let's just delete this guy, uh, to, to render this um, or generate this inside of, uh, of CD Engine. So I also just created, um, An export from CD Engine and then a render inside of Unreal, so I'm just able to, to get the get the the rendered materials out. And basically, what I'm doing is that I'm when I'm creating a rule, I attach it to the materials, and then if I want to have paving stones, then I do just choose paving stones and then the number of the material that I want to use. All right, let's get this away. So, if we take a rule, the urban dynamic rule, because now we just have a basic footprint uh, of a building, we need to determine if this is a, this is a building or is, is, a, is it a surface. And when we choose a building, then we will get all of the materials and the windows and the balconies and maybe this, not, this is not a very good random design, but... Uh, yeah, but it's there. So if I wanted to have like a brick number 14, um, I'll go down to my material selector and I will choose, where do we have uh, the facades? And we want to be bricks and <laughs> let's just keep it at number three. And now we have, um, the brick texture assigned to it. Right. Um, so that's basically how it works. Um, if I wanted to have uh, number 14, as I said before, then I just change the number and then we get uh, number 14. All right. So the exact same thing was done with the cat models. As you can see, when I mark this area, then it's split up and the split up is according to the different time steps in, in the street. So if I'm generating this area right here, then it would use the same material rule, get asphalt, get grass and stuff like that, uh, create street signs, also create lamps, and then everything is just ready to, to export, basically. And I actually had a lot of help from the, from the Civic office to get this uh, time bar to, to work inside of the JavaScript uh, application. So that's, 
you ask a question on GeoNet and who who is answering that, uh, that's of course from uh, from the Zurich office. Um, but basically, this is the same model. Um, we also did create some um, some different layers we could turn on, for example, uh, uh, noise um, simulations and stuff like that. But as we move this slider, we can see at which point we are building and when it's done. So right now they are building in this area and when we are hitting around April, so they should be done by now, then, uh, then the street are, are done, right? Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll see you next year. Have fun. Bye.